Welcome back to another episode of How to RP1, and this episode we're going to be doing X-Planes, but first things first, we need to relaunch this rocket so we can actually complete this contract, so I can afford to build an X-Plane. I'm going to speed through a lot of this because it's more or less just an introduction to the video. The main focus of this video is what happens next. But as every moment can be a teachable moment, even though in the crash simulation this rocket was aiming a little bit higher, um, it did have a little bit more drag and there's a few times that you'll notice in simulations like the aerodynamic effects won't be as accurate as a real time launch. Always kind of keep that in mind. You see here we already completed the, the downrange sounding rocket contract. We just have to recover this to complete the suborbital contract. And that's what is what's going to give us enough funding to be able to build an X-Plane. It's going to cost about, I want to be safe and say 20,000 funds to build and design the X-Plane. But we still need to put points into our space plane hangar to build it. If you're not doing the split pathing thing like I'm doing where you have two separate build lines, you don't have to worry about this. But again, this is how I play it. So we're gonna have to spend extra money if we wanna build this space plane before, I think it's like 5,000 days to the upgrades. I'll, I'll double, double check when we actually get to that part. But uh, I've got one more announcement to make before we actually go to the VAB and then I'll stop talking about nonsense and get down to the, actually the whole reason I started these videos, um, user Kim Chi on my YouTube channel asked me if I could go into a a video on you know creating wings and the dynamics of it so i took that and decided to do a whole series on how to start this game don't know how those correlate but that's how the uh, mind works anyways let's get out of here and get to the announcement now i know i already talked about this guy last time and i just want to touch on it some more the whole reason I even know how to design and build an X-Plane or even use procedural wings half as good as I can is purely because I sat here on my computer for like three days and just watched his build videos on his X-Planes at like one-tenth speed. I was going to originally put some of the footage in this video, but due to artist integrity, I'm not going to, so you just get to see his logo for a few seconds. But basically everything you're about to see me do comes from the mind of this guy. Something I learned from him, something I crafted myself after watching him. So if you really want to know how to do really crazy advanced X-Planes, he has a couple of uh, like build videos on his channel, including an X-15 build video, which I recommend you check out. I will link that in the description below. But I felt like that was needed to be said, so let's go ahead and get over to the space plane hangar. Now that we're in the space plane hangar, there's a few things we need to do before we get started. The Conal Cockpit is the first thing you want to buy, it's about five or six thousand dollars. And then the XLR11, which is another five or six thousand dollars. We've already spent over 10 grand, we haven't even gotten started. The first one's always the expensive one. Like all good planes, we're gonna start off with the cockpit. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a safety system for your Kerbals so you're not killing them left and right. Truth be told, flying with FAR and RSS is a bit different than flying in stock, and you're gonna learn that. Now, we're just going to go to the parachute settings and set this up just like we did with our sounding rocket. We're going to set it to wet mass just to be safe and get it all ready. Now, we need to put a decoupler behind this. That's for two reasons. One, with a decoupler, we can actually make our base of the plane a lot easier. And two, if something goes wrong and we stall the plane, we can decouple the cockpit and have the Kerbal float safely down to the ground or the water depending on where you're at. And I will put these on all of my planes. Now the decoupler, we want to set it to 1.25 meters. That's the best way to set it up with the cockpit as it is 1.25 meters on that flat part. And we're going to go over to payload and fairings. And we're going to grab a procedural hollow interstage ring. You need to grab the interstage ring, not the payload fairing. There's a difference. 
And I'm going to kind of show you how these work. Now you can use these for doing multiple stages on bigger rockets, or they make great heat proof bodies on airplanes. This is one of those things I learned from Calvin that kind of changed my whole uh, airplane making. We're going to pause for a second and zoom into the screen just so you can kind of see the settings I use. Um, you want the top to be at 1.25. I usually do the height or the length at 5 meters. And then the tail end, you're going to want somewhere around 0 0.7, 0 0.6. We'll have to make some adjustments to that later. We'll get to that when we get to it. Now we need to pick our uh, payload fairing material. I'm going to go with three color. Any of these will work. I just like to be able to control the color of mine. Um, it costs an extra dollar to do. That's completely up to you. Now when we grab this, uh, these are st base settings are four. We don't want four sides, we want two sides. You can click on the ring, which you got to make sure you actually click on the ring. And you'll see a number of sides. Set that to two. This next part is very important because we only want to hook this up to one side, like so. The reason for that is so we can kind of get an idea of how this is going to work. Now this doesn't look like much of a plane right now. We're going to go ahead and turn off auto fairing. We're going to make some adjustments. Now, The first adjustment will actually make the maximum size. Typically leave that alone. But the second one, this is what we're after. The ending and starting or the cycle end, cycle start. They will allow you to kind of adjust where the, the thickness of the center is going to be, like so. And it kind of gives you more of a tail end on the body, which you want. And I recommend playing around with this a little bit. Get a design you like. Um, I kind of mess around here, but this is sort of where I'm going to leave it for now. We'll make some changes in a little bit. And then all I got to do is add the fairing on both sides. Now sometimes when you use symmetry it doesn't quite work, I don't know why, so just alt click and copy it over and then just put both sides on there. Now we have a body, a basic body of an airplane. Here's the next important thing. It's going to be staged as a fairing down here and we don't want that. You can right click on it and you see this staged decoupler thing, click it off. Do it for both the fairings and the, uh, the hollow stage adapter. We don't want to accidentally stage the adapter because it will literally just rip the body off the plane. We don't want that. Get rid of them. You should have two things down here at the base and you're going to see the parachute and the decoupler, which is our safety system. Make sure those are left on there. We're going to pause and go back to the settings I was using for the fairing in case anyone wants to write them down or kind of copy how I have it. Uh, that's what I used. Anyways, let's get back to it. Now, me personally, I like to separate these two stages. That way I can decouple and then get ready to parachute when needed in case of an emergency. You can do it either way. But let's get to the wings. Now, we have supersonic wings unlocked, but we're not going to use them because they cost $10,000. But we want to unlock all moving. We want to unlock the wings and we want to unlock the control surfaces, if I could speak today. And we're going to start by grabbing the wings. Now, this next part is very important. We want to use two-way symmetry and line them up like so. But if you see here, we're attached to the cockpit, not the decoupler. We want to be attached to the decoupler. I'm going to root part this decoupler real fast and kind of show you what I mean. So if we were to decouple the headpiece, the cockpit, the wings would come with us. We don't want that. It's very bad. We want to make sure these are actually touching the decoupler and not touching the actual cockpit. Now the best way to do this is how I kind of set that decoupler to the root part so I can remove the cockpit. If I can remove the cockpit and nothing comes with me, we're good, we're solid. That's exactly what you want. There are a few other tricks, and I'll kind of touch on those a little bit later, but we're gonna focus on the wings. Now we're gonna use the move tool and we're gonna slide these wings back a bit. They look ridiculous right now. They're just the standard procedurally generated wings. We're not going to leave them like this. Usually a good starting point, in my opinion, is you want to go with kind of a triangular swept design. So I'm going to bring the height back down to about two. I'm going to pull this all the way down. I'm going to pull the next one all the way down. And I'm going to offset it just a little bit to where the back is flat. And of course, we want to make these 
pretty thin because they are early. We don't need big beefy wings. This is a real base starting point. But there is some things we have to do before we finish the wings. And like before, I'm going to go ahead and do a little zoom in screenshot just so you guys can kind of see the numbers that I'm using for these. Feel free to play around with them if you want. We're going to make some more adjustments later. But now that we have our base wing design, we're going to actually pull them off. And I'm going to fight with the fairing here for a second. We're going to just set those to the side somewhere because we need to make basically the mounting points for the wings, which we're going to grab another procedural wing. And I'm going to have a lot of trouble clipping this in because, again, trying to get it on that decoupler is a bit of a pain. I'm going to speed this up for just a second. And then I'm going to show you guys another little nifty trick. Now, we still have the decoupler set as our root part, which is going to cause an issue later, but I'll show you how to fix that. We're going to go ahead and use the move tool, and we're going to pull the cockpit forward. We're just going to hold down shift and offset it forward. That way, we have no way to clip onto it, and we can clip onto the decoupler a lot easier. You don't have to do that, but it's just... It does save a lot of headache when trying to set these wings up. So, just a little quick tip that is always an option. Um, I'll talk about the issue it causes a little bit later, but... We're going to go ahead and make these... Basically take the length almost all the way down. And we are going to basically make these little side mounting ports. Now we're going to adjust these because we, we kind of want like almost like a trapezoid looking shape. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, we're leaving the bottoms thick, but we're making the top a lot thinner. And that's where we're going to mount the wings. And we're going to want to shorten this down a bit. Um, basically playing with the second and third tab will adjust the tops and bottoms. Get something you kind of like. And we're going to drag, drag it back. And we want it to be pretty much either at the decoupler or just before the decoupler. As you see, part of it is going inside. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but part of it is going inside. Essentially, this is sort of the base shape we want. Now, I like to offset this a little bit, where the front is more aerodynamically, like, swept back. And the actual back surface, I'll take, I'll just completely take it off, and I want to make it like a triangle shape back here, and I want this to be as flat as possible. Early on in these builds, this part isn't as important. Once we get to more advanced X-Planes, in fact, I'm gonna, later I'm gonna show a video of one of my like later suborbital X-Planes. And we're kinda gonna kinda go over the process of how I built that. And that's just gonna kinda give you an idea of what I mean by that triangle shape on the back. But anyways, we're just gonna make some quick fine tune adjustments to this. I don't want the bottom piece sticking out too far like so, and I don't want it to be pushed forward like that. I want it to be like a nice, sleek profile angle, kind of how I have it set up now. Now this is what you don't want to do. Um, I'm going to show you what these are for. You're going to basically mount the wings here, but before you mount the wings, I usually recommend do the turn first and then mount them. I'm going to just kind of show you why. We're going to actually angle these little guys we're going to tuck them in and we're going to angle them down just a little bit, like so. And it's going to be a very, very small adjustment, so I'm having snap off. But it's also going to cause the wings to tilt down, which means you have to fix that because you want the wings to be flat, if that makes sense. Like, see how they're kind of like auto-turning? We're going to go ahead and just use the uh, rotate tool to adjust that and make them go flat again. But if you do the turn first and then attach the wings, you can avoid all of this hassle right here. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I meant by that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the color on this real quickly. Just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I want the wings to be level with that top flat part. Right now we're a little off center. So I just changed the color so you can actually see the difference between the white and the gray. Uh, normally I wait until I'm like all done building and then I'll go through and recolor everything and make it look all fancy. We're not going to be really going over that. We're just going over the basic design of your first ice plane. So now that I'm happy with this wing, I kind of want to go through and make a couple of little adjustments and I'm going to change the color on the center of this just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. These are swept back and they're great for speed, but they're not the best for gliding, if that makes sense. We're going to make some tweaks to make these more I want to say triangle shaped, but that's not the right word because we want to leave the top of it uh, flat to a certain degree. But we want to basically make the base of the wing wider. 
and then the top of the wing a little bit skinnier. You see the, the black part on the back I'm messing with, that's the, the trailing. Sometimes I'll even just completely cut the trailing off and then use the control surface for it. But I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to leave it on there, at least for this build. And I'm going to make the control surface a different color so you can actually see what I mean by attaching control surfaces. Which we're going to be going into here relatively soon. I would recommend playing around with these, uh, the wings a little bit. Kind of get used to how these work. I want... I guess the trapezoid is the shape I'm looking like. Elongated trapezoid is the kind of the shape I want. And those are really good for gliding. But we're going to go over and grab a control surface real fast. Now there are the control surfaces and the all moving. You don't want the all moving. You want the control surfaces. That's very important. We're going to go ahead and rotate this to where it's kind of clipped onto the side. We're going to use snap to kind of assist us on this. And I mean, it's giant. It looks weird. We're going to fix all that. First thing to do is make it very thin to match your wing profile and then we're going to kind of lengthen it out a little bit but we want to make it sh shorter i guess is the way to, to put this but you see i'm kind of dragging the trailing really low we're going to want to kind of adjust this now there's a couple different options when it comes to control services you have these two extra options up top here basically one of them will adjust the base of the wing how it's protruding out and then the other one will adjust the top so right now we're kind of at an angle i want these to remain angled but i still want to kind of have that flat surface on the very edge of the wing so you see uh, you're able to drag both those back and forth and adjust those a little bit that, that's sort of what i'm talking about now we're going to make this a little bit longer and we're going to use we're going to take snap off and we're going to actually drag this over a little bit because i want this control surface to reach the very edge of the wing but I don't want it to quite touch the base. You want to leave a little bit of a gap in there, and we'll kind of go over that here in a little bit why, but the main thing is we want to make sure the control surface reaches all the way out. I'm making very small, micro, fine adjustments, and you can see it's still not quite right. It's still, it's still a little bit protruding out, and if we go over too far, it doesn't quite work. So we're going to make it a little bit longer, and we just kind of want it to slightly overlap. This is why I made these multicolored so you can see the, the difference between the control surface and the wing. The black parts the wing, the all white parts the control surface. You want to go with something similar to this. This way we'll have good enough, you know, angle of attack when it comes to this control surface. But ignore that. We want it to be able to where it's still flat. Now I'm going to adjust this part just a little bit to kind of line it up a little better because it was a little offset and you want that to be as smooth and as level as possible. You want it to match up exactly. So as you see when I pull this out, it's still kind of tilted out a little bit. So we're going to make some adjustments to the control surface. We're going to kind of move this back and forth until it's nice and flat. That's kind of what you're aiming for. And then there's a few other adjustments I'm going to want to make here in just a moment. You're going to want to play around with the control surfaces and get something you like. I'm going to explain to you how the far menu works, which is a super great tool to figure out if your plane can glide or not. Um, this particular build doesn't come out perfect when we first test it. Um, there's a lot of micro detail and a lot of micro adjustment you will be putting into these X-Planes. As I said before, if I did like a full scale with all the micro adjustments in real time, it would be an hour long or longer live stream. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the future. As of right now, I'm just going to kind of adjust these back to where I kind of like them. Now we're going to end up moving these a little bit later anyways to adjust our center of lift, but we still need to finalize the center of mass. Now, the next big issue is you're going to notice this. Now, I kind of circled down below there that height. Look at the height very closely when we do this. We're going to put a single wing on the top, and we're basically going to be setting up a spot for the tail fin. For some reason, and I'm not sure why, it doesn't always do this, but when you make the base of it wider, it counts it as height when it's really not height. You see as I kind of move the base back and forth, the height will change, even though I'm making it longer. I'm not 100% sure why it does that, but always keep that in mind because with early air launch systems, um, you have certain limitations to what you can air launch. And air launching, we're going to go through once we actually get into the, like the simulation parts of this. 
But I kind of want to make this swept back like my side pieces. In fact, you can copy over your side piece. Sometimes I'll do that. But for this particular instance, we're just going to start from scratch. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make the top really thin, leave the base kind of wide. And we're going to drag this back to where it comes over to the tail of the plane, to where that front part's not protruding. Now, a trick to get around that height issue. You can either make two of these and basically stack them together because they won't it, it won't mess with the little height issue that you run into sometimes. But for this instance, I'm just going to use the trailing function to make the back end longer or shorter as I see fit rather than using multiple pieces because that's kind of like an advanced trick. But again, we're going to kind of offset it to where this is more square in the back. It won't be perfectly square, but we can actually use the trailing and leading tools to adjust the length of it without actually adjusting the length of the base, which is what causes that little glitch about the height. It's a nice little trick to know, and I might be going through this a little bit fast. I, again, I've done this a few times, so I, I kind of know what I'm looking for, but you're kind of aiming for a shape sort of like I have here. Once you get to this, you're going to need to make these really small adjustments to where that back piece is as flat as possible. Again, we need some way to line the, the uh, tail fin up. The tail fin is going to actually be in two separate pieces. We're going to grab, in just a second, one more wing. And we're going to make a little triangle-ish shape. And then we're going to attach a control surface to the back of that, which will actually create the tail fin. Which will kind of give us a... It'll allow us to basically turn, steer our rear end left and right um, when we do the tail wings that's what's going to be a major control of our pitch side wings are going to purely be there to help turn us sideways the tail fin's going to help us roll and a lot of our lift is going to come from the rear tail fins we're going to put on here shortly same idea though put it on top we're going to make all this stuff really small we're going to offset it a little bit we're going to thin it down we're going to basically try and make a triangle-ish shaped piece, but we want the back to be as flat as possible. When I first do this, I don't get it as flat as I'd like it, and then it causes the control surface to sit offset, which we don't want. Usually at this point, I will zoom in very closely, and I will make very, very small, like I'll use that right-click micro-adjustment thing to very, very slightly adjust the top or the bottom until it's as flat as possible. Then I want to kind of protrude the bottom of this part out so it's more of an aerodynamic cutting design. And this looks like a, like a, 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 a wing, it looks like a tail fin. But we still need to add the control surface to it. So we're going to slide this forward here in a second. And I'm going to kind of show you how to add that tail fin. Two things you can do. If you see where the white is, that is the base of our fin. And we made the whole thing white. Now you can actually cut the back piece off if you want and just make it flat and then adjust it from there. I like doing it this way because it makes it a little easier for me to do. But we, we set that color that way for a reason. Mostly because I want you to see the difference between the control surface and the rest of the wing. And kind of tuck this down and pull it back a little bit so it's actually going into the fairing. And then we're going to slide this bit forward. Not too much, but enough to slap a control surface. A little L shape you see right there. That is where our control surface, our actual moving part of our tail fin is going to be. Just like we did the wings, we're gonna go ahead and use a snap tool to line this up. Then we're gonna rotate it to where it's facing vertical instead of horizontal. And you can already see that it's a little offset. And we're, we're gonna just kind of make this a little bit shorter and I'm gonna make some adjustments to kind of bring it down. Um, this is something you're gonna play with a lot especially when you're first getting used to these, these are kind of a pain to build because you want them to be the exact length to where they touch the top. But they don't quite touch that bottom piece. You want to leave a, a little bit of a gap there so it can actually move. Um, it can be a little glitchy sometimes, like you see it kind of glitching out now. And we don't want that. We got our base design set up, so we're going to pull, it off, pull that off to the side for a second. And I'm going to make a couple of little adjustments here to try to straighten that back out because, again, we're still not perfectly flat. For this instance, I'm just going to cut off that tailing section. I'm going to pull this back a little bit, recenter it, and I'm going to use the offset tool to kind of adjust this. And I want to get that as straight as I possibly can. 
once you do this enough, you'll kind of get the feel for it. Um, there is another way. If you can't quite get that perfectly straight, you can always make adjustments to the control surface to kind of balance it out. But for right now, I want to make that as straight as I can. And I'm going to take this wing here, use the snap tool, and clip it back on. It looks a little ridiculous right now, but we're going to shorten that down. And then we're actually going to make it line up with the base of the tail fin. And you can use a lot of these tools here to kind of move it back and forth. Be careful, they're a little touchy. Um, I usually drag them close and then I'll use the fine adjustment. Again, the right click to make the fine tune adjustments like so until I get it lined up exactly how I want it. Tail fins are very important to flight profiles. I would be lying if I said you could just kind of smash this one together real fast. You don't want to do that. You want to take your time. Even now in real time, I feel like I'm, I'm going too fast with this because I'm just trying to get the point across. We're going to go ahead and do a couple of micro, micro adjustments. Make sure we're clearing that bottom, but also making sure the top piece is exactly lined up with the top of the control service. Well, that white piece is con connected to that black piece right there. We want that to be as flat as possible and as straight as possible. And we want the bottom of it to line up as well as we can with the spot that the wing is sitting on. There are a couple ways you can do that. This is just the way I prefer to do it. Um, you can, you don't ever want to try adjusting it either like this. I kind of wanted to go into the the rotate tool because a lot of people oh, just rotate. It. No, you don't want to rotate it because it can cause it to clip in certain areas and it can cause some cracking issues that you just kind of want to avoid. I went ahead and put it back and I'm just going to use the J menu to fine tune this wing as much as possible. Once we get it set up to how we like it, which we're gonna leave it about here. We're gonna go over and talk about you know, wing profile. We're gonna grab, remember those, uh, the, the spots we use to mount the wings? We're gonna actually lower those because we wanna keep that lower to the base of the bottom and we're gonna tuck them in a little bit. We're basically lowering the wing profile. Now, you don't wanna do them too low, but you don't wanna keep them at mid-level like we have them. Um, I'll usually kind of play around with this in the far menu as well. But once we kind of get, you know, towards a little bit lower to the ground, make sure both sides are moving collectively together. We may need to tuck this in just a little bit and make some minor, you know, adjustments. If the bottom's sticking out too much, you might need to roll that a little bit more and like I did earlier. Um, I kind of like it as it is now, but I want to bring those wings down just a little bit more. And we're going to try cupping those in a bit. And we're still going to have a little bit of a clipping problem right there. So typically at this point, we're gonna take the wing off. We're gonna re-rotate this just a little bit, not too much, but enough to where it's, you know, it looks like it's actually attached to the fairing. And then we're gonna go ahead and reattach the wings. Again, use the snap function. We may have to do some adjustments after the fact, but using the snap function is the best way to get these lined up as good as possible. And once you get them snapped on there, then you can go through with the, see how it kind of bent the wings down. We don't want that. So we're gonna rotate the wings back up. We want those to be as flat as possible compared to where it's mounted to. Now it's time to talk the weir, rear wings or rear flaps. We're gonna kind of do the same thing as before. We're gonna slap on some of these wings here. We're not gonna attach them directly there. Usually I'll just hook these up to the decoupler and we can adjust the height later. Now adjusting the height of these will um, change certain aspects of your ship. And these particular ones, we're gonna make them really small. They're gonna be the mounting point for our all moving wings. But you basically want to make like a small little square or triangle and these are purely there just so we can mount the all moving wings to some kind of base once we get these attached on here we're going to go into more detail about what they do now i typically like to go with a more triangular design like so once we mount the all moving wings to these we're going to make a couple more adjustments to try to smooth them out and make them attach a little bit better now we're gonna grab our all moving wings and we're gonna attach them to the sides. And sometimes it can fight you on this and it's super annoying. You can actually see me struggle with this for a second, but we wanna put these on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and make these smaller for a second so they're easier to control. We're not gonna leave them looking like this. You actually want them to be mounted on the outside of the wing. And you're gonna kinda see me do it right here. 
Once we get these mounted on here, we're gonna adjust and design our rear wings, and then we're gonna kind of adjust the attachment points a little bit to kind of make them how we want. I normally do like a swept back design on these. I mean, you're gonna like them thin like the rest of the wing is, and don't worry too much how this looks currently against your base, because you can always adjust the base later relatively easy. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through these little fine adjustments, and I'll put a screenshot of what I ended up with just for time's sake. And we're still not quite done with the wings, but we're gonna come back to them here in just a second. I'm gonna show you the far menu. It's this little thing that says far C down below. Now up in the top corner, you have static analysis, but we wanna go down to the stability one. Now you wanna hit five. I don't know why it hit 5,000, but five kilometers is a really good a base start on this just do five kilometers and then one Mach one is about 330 ish meters a second which is kind of where we're going to aim this plane at the faster you build these planes the higher you're going to want to turn that number but we want to check the st stability so as of right now we have all these green numbers that's a good thing if you can get them all green that's great but the one thing you want to avoid are red numbers now on the very bottom left, there's a number there that's going to turn a little bit red later. That's fine. You just want to have mostly green numbers. And I'm just going to kind of show you what happens if you make like adjustments to these rear wings real fast. I'm going to go ahead and bring them up and center them. We're going to go back into the far screen. I'm going to show you kind of what changes once we do that. And I will be, again, posting the screenshot of the final stuff with the wings if you want to copy it on there. But we're back at the far screen, and the numbers have changed, but they're still green. That's still good. Now we're going to focus on the little white line that's behind the ship. We want that slightly angled down. It's, it's, it's hard to see because it's, it's very slightly angled down, like very slightly. We're going to move these up just a little bit and then recheck the stability and see how not a lot changes. Little tweaks like that or what make X-Planes good. They don't just have to be able to fly under thrust though, they have to be able to fly and glide back to the space center. So I'm just gonna make little micro adjustments and I'm gonna keep hitting the stability and you're gonna see the numbers keep changing. I'm making very minor adjustments and it will keep making those numbers change. So keep that in mind as you adjust this because I do like to do a little bit of aesthetics, but sometimes making too big of adjustments can cause problems and always refer back to the far screen i usually keep it up while i'm designing and adjusting wings just to make sure i don't change them too much to ruin the stability of the plane you will have to go back and check this in just a second because we still haven't put tanks or engines or send out the weight yet i usually do two different checks on the far screen with full tanks and with empty tanks and speaking of tanks, we're going to go ahead and fast forward for a second and get to the actual tank adding. I'm just making some little aesthetic adjustments. Nothing I'm actually doing here really matters. You can kind of play around with this on your own. But let's get down to the tanks and adding the engine. So we unlocked um, the aluminum tanks, the high pressure ones, which I'm going to end up using because they weigh a little bit less and you get some more delta V out of them. But this is the way that I've seen Calvin do it, and it actually makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make these rounded off. They need to be high pressure because the XLRs are pressure fed rockets, but we're going to make them kind of skinny and elongated. I start off with 0.3 meters because we have the first rocket that's at 0.3 meters to, you know, kind of lessen the tooling cost. But in the end, I think I go with like 0.5 meters because the tooling cost isn't too terrible. Aluminum tanks do cost a little bit more to tool, but because these are such thin tanks, they're not going to cost that much money. We're going to use the offset tool and we're going to kind of bring these together. Then we're going to kind of tuck them back into the bay. This is exactly how a real plane would be. There'd be the body structure and then be some kind of like fuel tank fuselage inside of it. The reason I recommend doing it this way is you can actually adjust where the tanks sit in the body to help kind of adjust the center of mass. Once you build the body, the center of lift is kind of stationary. It's stuck. It won't move. And if it goes in the wrong direction on the center of mass, it can cause instability, cause the plane to flip once it runs out of fuel. All kinds of things can happen. So using these separate offset tanks like so will actually help increase your ability to adjust the center of mass to fit your center of lift. I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple of quick adjustments. We're not going to tool anything yet. We still have a couple of tests to run. 
But it's time to go ahead and add an engine. Now again, we're gonna be using the XLR11. It has multiple ignitions. It's throttleable. Blah, blah, blah. And it uh, it it's pretty much the X plane engine is what it is based off the engine they used when they first did X planes. Again, it is pressure fed, so we want to make sure we have these set to high pressure aluminum or high pressure tank if you don't have aluminum tanks locked. We're gonna pretty much add these on exactly the same way we did the tanks. Now we're gonna grab the XLR11 and we're gonna attach it to the very top of the decoupler, not the sides, the very top, half snap turned on. We're going to use the keyboard adjustment keys to point it backwards, grab the move tool, hold down shift and drag it all the way back. The shift key part is very important because there's a certain limitation to how much you can offset stuff, but holding down shift will override that. I'm pretty sure most of you who played stock KSP know about that trick. I figure I should mention it anyways. Now once back here, we're going to go ahead and lower it down and center it. I'm going to make some quick adjustments to the fairing piece on the outside real quick, just so it doesn't clip in too much to avoid any possible crack and attacks. And then we're going to go ahead and hop over to landing legs. Now, the thing about landing legs, especially with X-Planes and Kerbal Space Program in general, is there is this annoying bounce glitch, and we're going to kind of go over that here in a second. I'm going to put the plane all together and then I'm going to go into the menu and grab the small landing legs. Not the very, very small ones, but just like the small landing gear. You don't want to use anything bigger. In fact, we're going to scale these down a little bit with tweak scale. For the front one, I usually recommend attaching it some more onto the cockpit because if it clips too much into the body, it can cause issues with the fairing getting all bouncy and you don't want that. As for the rear ones, we're going to attach those on those those mounting points we use for the wings. We're going to kind of attach them there. We're going to start by putting them on the decoupler sideways. Use the move tool to drag them back. Rotate them back around. I usually keep snap on for this so I can get them nice and straight. And then we're going to kind of tuck them in to that little wing we put on there to kind of give an attachment point to our actual wings. Um, you can make these bigger and kind of play around if you want more of an aesthetic looking deal. But right now I'm just trying to show you guys the basics of the X-Plane. I'm going to make a couple of quick adjustments here. Um, something I did want to point out, if you want to get these lower to the ground, you can actually angle them out a little bit. And I'm going to kind of do that real quick. Always save before you start making any crazy adjustments to your landing legs because it will save you a lot of headache. Now by using the rotate tool, we kind of offset them a little bit to where they're slightly angled and we can kind of tuck these in a little bit more and it will, it will allow you to have a lower base on the plane. Now, you're gonna kind of see me go back and forth through the crash screen here in a moment, trying to get this to work. I like to kind of tilt the wheel out a little bit for the same purpose, if it will let me. Sometimes that doesn't work. We're going to hop over to the landing strip real quick, and I'm going to show you kind of what happens. So real quick, we're just going to ignite the engine for a second and cut the power because I want to show you what I mean by the annoying wheel bounce. This isn't going to last very long because we basically blow up on the spot. We let go of the brake, we ignite it, and bounce, bounce, and in a second, boom. That is something that you're going to have to learn to deal with because it likes to happen a lot. Now, that wheel bounce issue is from a number of things. It could be because we have it clipped in too much. It could be that we have too much weight on the front of the plane. We're going to balance the plane real fast and see if it helps. And if it doesn't, then we're going to need to make some adjustments to the wheels. The very first thing I recommend you do is turn on center of lift and center of mass. Now, just like on a rocket, you never want the center of mass to be behind the center of lift. But, while the tanks are full, you want the center of mass and center of lift to be as close as possible. Unfortunately, right now, with the weight on the plane, it does cause some instability on one of our numbers. We'll have all a bunch of greens, and then we'll get one red number. And that's as soon as I fill the tanks. Right now, we're empty. Let's go back in and fill the tanks full of fuel, and you'll see what I mean. 
Sometimes by readjusting the tanks and moving them back a little bit, you can fix this issue. Um, because right now we're at a little bit of a nosedive, and then it's pretty much because the center of mass is too far forward, so we need to bring it back. Which is again why I like this particular tank setup. We can simply just shift the tanks backwards a little bit. We want to try and get those as close as possible. You can move the wings forward a little bit, you can move, you know, the rear wings up and forward a little bit, you can make some adjustments, but the end goal is to have the center of lift center of mass almost inside of each other as close as you can get them and then when you drain the tanks you want to make sure the center of mass shifts forward that that's how you balance the plane out and sometimes that will fix the far screen sometimes the far screen is a little too intense and it's not actually a big issue um, the best way to test all that is by using the uh, air launch system and crash which we'll go over here shortly but right now we're just gonna kind of balance this plane out and we're going to go ahead and off screen, I'm going to test the landing legs, see if it fixes it. And I'll be back with you in just a moment. Unfortunately, we still do get a little bit of a bounce, but it's a little bit better now. So we're going to shrink down these wheels a little bit. I'm going to clip it more into the cockpit, try to spread them out a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail because a lot of this is either you're having a glitch, KSP is being KSP or sometimes it just happens. We're gonna make these small adjustments. I'm gonna again put this craft file in the description after I'm done, I'm gonna drop box it so you guys can just download the craft file to see a little bit more. But we're gonna head out to the crash screen once again and we're gonna talk air launching because air launching is very important, especially when it comes to X-planes. Okay, so before we do the air launch thing, we're gonna talk about atmospheric autopilot, which is basically SAS on steroids, and trust me, you just want to use it. It's this little AA thing down here in the corner. By activating the master switch, it will actually turn it off and on. By default, the P key on the keyboard will toggle it on and off. There's a bunch of different settings and UI settings. By default, it's on something called moderation, which will limit a lot of stuff on your plane. I would test a few things with moderation on, but I usually turn moderation off. Now, because it will reduce stuff like the area of effect drag, and it will automatically adjust your throttle and other things. So if you're just trying to ch check the cruising speed at like, you know, the sound barrier, you have moderation turned on. But if you you just want to go for it go ahead and just turn it to default turn moderation off and then you'll basically be flying with just the stability control i'm going to leave moderation on for a minute just so to kind of show you guys what i mean by that but once you get this set up and you have it ready to go um you want to turn it on before we do the air launch this will prevent you from spiraling out of control Okay, sorry, we're back. Anyways, we're gonna turn atmospheric autopilot back on, and then we're gonna go up to the little uh, Kerbal Construction Time tab here, and it's gonna unopen this uh, air launch stuff here. Now, by default, it's at your max parameter for whatever air launch you have unlocked, and it's set to a thousand kilometers away from the landing strip. A thousand kilometers is way too far. You wanna set this to like 100, 150. Keep in mind, it's gonna take a while to glide back. But as soon as you hit launch, it's going to teleport you into the sky and you're going to want to immediately tuck those landing legs in and ignite the engine. Now again, we have moderation on, so it's going to re it's going to limit the G-forces I can push this plane to. But I just kind of wanted to show you what the air launch function does. It launches you in the air, and that's actually how they did X-planes in real life. They'd launch them off a different craft, drop them loose, they'd ignite their engines, and they'd basically just take off and they'd try to break speed records. Early X-Plane contracts, there's a couple different ones you'll go through, and a lot of them are like, oh, maintain this speed, or achieve this speed, and get to this altitude. We're just going to cruise up to 10 kilometers, and we're going to kind of balance out, and we're just going to cruise for a minute. We will be coming back, and I'll be showing you without moderation a little bit later. 
I just kind of wanted to go over some of the settings, kind of show you how this works. But you're going to want to basically follow that prograde marker if you're going to be trying to do speed. When inside that prograde marker, you are at the least amount of resistance because you're at the most aerodynamic profile of your flight. So usually in the beginning, slowly coast up to what speed, uh, to the altitude you want, the higher the altitude, less control, but the less resistance. And then basically just full throttle it after that and you're good to go. And because I'm messing with these settings up in the air, it's gonna kinda kill my engine and see how it kinda moderates it back down to the lower speed. Uh, that's what I was talking about. It's quite annoying and sometimes in crash or glitch, even though I have moderation turned off, I can't control my throttle. If that happens, usually just restart the simulation. Um, you have all these, like, you have speed control, altitude control, you have all this cool stuff you can play with. I could spend all day talking about it. I'd recommend you kind of go through and read up on everything, see what options you have. Heck, if you want to play with the preset settings, adjust these to how you'd like to set them. You can save certain presets for each plane. That is totally up to you. I'm just kind of showing you a few of the screens that Atmospheric Autopilot allows you to use. Now we're back over to the VAB, we're going to talk drag chutes. Now, just like the normal parachutes, or like, you know, for the capsule or for like a rocket or whatever, we're going to hook a couple of these on to the back end of the plane and make drag chutes to help us slow down when we land. Now, unfortunately, with this design, we don't have a whole lot of wiggle room to, to really mount these because you can't mount them inside the fairing or it likes to glitch them out. I don't know why it just does. So I'm going to go ahead and make these smaller. And I'm going to just place them on the top of the wing where the rear wings sit. That way we have a, a good place to mount them and a good place that they'll hang out. And instead of making them, you know, main and blah, 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 we're going to turn them into drag chutes. I usually set them to altitude and just put them, you know, 50 to 100. The, the base settings work pretty well. Um, you can bring those down a little bit if you want. That's totally up to you. Make sure you apply it to symmetry so they both get it. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move them around and get them lined up. The reason you want these is if you land on the runway too far back and your your brakes, I can guarantee won't be enough to slow you down. You don't wanna crash off the edge and blow yourself up. So having drag chutes will be the, like the perfect way to slow yourself down so you can stop instead of crash. I'm kind of messing around here trying to find a good spot to put them and I do decide to place them right here and I call it good. I just wanted to go over that with you guys real fast. And now on to the uh, fun part, or I guess the next part of the video where we're gonna do an actual full scale crash simulation. Now, unfortunately we ran into a bit of an issue as you can see here, I have total control of my wings, but as soon as I air launch this, I lose all roll ability. And without being able to roll, it is pretty much impossible to land an X-plane. I tried filming this about 30 different times, and you guys will see what I mean. As soon as I hit launch, I lose complete roll control, and I can't actually turn my plane or do anything of those sorts. So we're just going to go over basic flying. I'm going to recommend that you guys download this craft file and practice with it a bit and crash. I have to go figure out what exactly is going on. I have been trying to figure it out for like two days now and nothing. Either way, typically once you engage your engines, I like to full throttle and start pointing up slowly. Make sure to stay in that prograde marker so you have the least drag on your ship. You also want to hit the caps lock key to turn on fine tune your little, uh, bottom left corner thing those little arrows should turn blue but if you can just see it down there I'm just tapping the S key just very lightly tapping it until I get up to just under 30 degrees and then once we get there you're gonna throttle back just enough to keep your speed going but not enough to go fast we're gonna we're gonna climb to 15 kilometers just to get that uh, milestone but we're gonna not engage full speed until we get up above 12. That way the drag is low enough that it doesn't overheat the craft. These wings don't like going super fast in thick atmosphere. 600 meters a second is right around Mach 2, give or take. And anything more than that can start causing overheating problems or just having the, rims, the wings rip off. 
So we're going to avoid that. Now, once you kind of get up to this 11, 12 kilometers, you can start tipping down. Again, go very slow. Let the program marker follow you. And I went ahead and started punching it a little bit early. You want to start getting as flat as possible, but try and keep it in the blue just a little bit when you full throttle initially. And then you're going to slowly come down and follow that program marker if you're going for speed. If you're going for a height, keep a little bit of a pitch up. You want to be able to increase your speed by gradually getting higher. That's one of the better ways to get altitude. Later X planes, you're going to want to be a little bit more aggressive with your pitch, especially if you're trying to go like Carmen line suborbital. Um, that will take a little bit of practice, but we don't have the correct tech for that because we will kill our kerbals if we go that high. So keep it under 20k probably early on without any RCS control. You have no control over these X planes. So Honestly, I wouldn't recommend going higher than 20k. We're just going to do 15k just to make sure this craft can do it. And then we're going to kind of cut over and speed through the whole how to normally land and get back to the KSC. Typically, once you start seeing the island, you want to use your roll control to kind of turn the craft lightly to make sure you're lined up. Uh, we are unfortunately not going to be lined up with the runway, and I have no way to actually turn the plane properly without stalling it. Um, we're going to be flying this craft for real in the next episode when we go over advanced orbital, or sorry, advanced rocketry, um, advanced building, as well as balancing X-plane contracts and building upgrades. So we will be flying this in the next episode, and I should have the problem fixed by then. We do unfortunately crash, but we're going to go ahead and kind of just zoom through a little bit of this, get closer to the island. And basically, as you're coming down, you just want to do a very slight glide just nosing down a little bit because we need to kill the altitude but we don't want to kill too much speed until we get closer to the runway early planes you want to touch down closer to like 80 or less meters a second um, unfortunately because we try to do a grass landing I actually hit a little bit of a hill and it nose dives and it crashes if you end up in a situation where you don't feel comfortable landing it only costs about $1,000 to build another plane. Just eject the pilot and save the pilot. It's much cheaper that way. And you still technically complete the contract as long as the cockpit doesn't explode. Now I'm going through all these little windows here trying to find out if something's locking my roll control. And I couldn't figure it out. It's some kind of weird glitch. It only happens when I'm in simulation doing air launches. So I'm sorry we didn't get to do a proper landing today. Uh, once I get this built and fly it in next episode I'll actually go over landing techniques and a few things to avoid or pretty much I'm going to show you a bunch of ways to crash your plane and kill your curvals <laughs> and then I'm going to show you kind of the, the right way to land. Um, normally I'd be doing some swooping motions to bleed off speed but since I can't tilt my plane left or right I kind of can't do anything. It's sort of hard to see but I'm actually a little bit tilted sideways too which is one of the reasons why I knew I probably wasn't going, going to be able to land this plane. I ran like 35 different crash simulations. I reboot my computer, I reinstalled the mods and for some reason I could not use roll control. I couldn't land the plane because of it. You will see me do this kind of weird like up and down maneuver because I try to bleed off speed. I think this was like attempt 16. Uh, it was the best take I was able to get, so that's what we're using. Again, I'm super sorry about the no landing thing. If you want, you can actually attach like a parachute like on top of your plane somewhere and just like parachute land the plane if you're really that concerned about saving the thousand dollars. But again, astronauts cost 50k. You got to train them. You can build another plane for about a thousand bucks. Really, sometimes it's better just to let the, the plane crash and save the cockpit after we drop the two points in the space plane hangar which we're going to do after the simulation it takes about 120 days to build a tooled plane honestly that's not bad time wise we can always add more points later if you feel like it usually focusing more on sounding record contracts will make you more money but i do know some people like to do the whole plane thing so that's why i'm kind of adding this in here you also get a lot of really good milestone contracts for doing X-Plane missions, especially once you get to that Karma line and recover it because you get science bonuses for actually putting a human in space. 
but we're just gonna kind of tr I'm gonna do I did my best to try to land this uh, I'm still going way too fast I missed the runway already I couldn't line up with it uh, the grass out here is fairly flat but you do get some bumps so I'm just trying to bleed off as much speed as I can and try and use my drag sheets to land which always isn't always the best way usually you want to start the touchdown before releasing the drag shoots fully that way you have all three wheels on the ground I tried to kind of cheat it I flew this plane in a different save file because I didn't care if I lost the money on it and this plane can land it can it can land really well actually on the runway but because of this weird glitch I'm getting it was I I was tired of crashing anyways um, we're just gonna try to come down you want the tires to kind of land together and they don't we bounce and we rolled forward try to avoid that but again I will upload this craft file so you guys can play around with it yourself see exactly what I did a little bit closer we're just gonna go ahead and speed through me adding the points and getting the planes built I'm gonna make a second one for a backup and that's pretty much where we're gonna call the episode this was pretty long and I'm, I'm sorry about that unfortunately there's a lot that goes into X planes so hopefully you guys made it this far Hopefully you guys learned enough from watching the little bit I did do. When we come back, we'll be going into these more advanced sounding rocket contracts. Um, we're going to do some more science pickup. Going to fly this actual plane. And just kind of show you how to get ready to get orbital. Um, I am able to do it by 1954. Uh, don't feel bad if you don't quite make it to <laughs> orbital by 1954. I've been playing for a while. But we're going to kind of go over all that, and after we do the advanced building, I'm going to show you guys basically how to do your first orbital rocket in the following video. And then we're going to talk a little bit of mech jab and probably go ahead and do human space flight. That I'm not sure of, but at that point I want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you hated it, thumbs it down. Let me know if there's anything else I can do in the comments. I will be putting uh, Calvin's real-time build video link in the description i recommend you check that out for more advanced building techniques he's a lot better than i am and really that's it so i hope i see you guys uh next time uh in chapter four of how to rp1